So today we're going to be looking at migrating my home lab from Overt, which I've traditionally run on my R710, to host a bunch of VMs that are used to then manage the OpenStack environment. And it also hosts like my Kubernetes VMs, for example, which runs a lot of important stuff for me. So we're going to look at migrating that from Overt to just run it on Fedora Server, but we're going to install OpenShift on top of Fedora Server and then the Triple O Director Operator, and we're going to use that to redeploy the OpenStack environment instead of having a Director VM. So to do that, I want to preserve all those VMs that currently run in over today. So what we need to do is look at how we can save those disk images so that when we install Fedora Server, we can just restart those VMs straight on top of Fedora and run them as if nothing had happened. So the first thing we want to do is we want to have a look at Overt. We're going to log in here. And we want to figure out where those disks live so that we can understand how we're going to preserve this moving forward. So these are the VMs that are running. We can see that I have these two compute nodes. So these are compute nodes that are part of OpenStack. They don't run any VMs. They're quite small, but I just use them to test things like network configurations, for example, because it's much easier to add and subtract network interfaces from a virtual machine than it is my physical server behind me, for example. So testing various network configurations or role-specific parameters that I want to apply on my, my actual compute node that runs VMs, the R610, I'll do that to these virtual compute nodes first, since there is no risk in, in playing around with them and breaking things if, if I need to do so. So I would ideally like to preserve those VMs. So we'll go through and find those disks. Um, the controller, this is the actual OpenStack controller. So we have our triple O director that deploys to the controller, this compute node, and my R610 behind me. So for the controller, for example, if we go to disks, we can see here that it uses controller zero disk one. Now this is a friendly alias that Overt uses, but it's not actually how Overt refers to that disk on the file system. So if we go over here to storage disks, we can see controller disk one, and it has this UID here. Now this UID is how Overt is actually going to address this disk on the file system. So we'll just copy that because that will become important in a minute. So I'll just control C that. And if we click on controller zero, we can see that it's coming from the small disk profile. So we go to domains, we see we have a small domain here and it's coming from the mount over engine. So let's flick over to our terminal. Let's clear the screen. So if we do mount, actually it's probably easier to see in DF, we can see we have a bunch of these NFS mounts. Now these are just coming from this direct host. It's this host presenting NFS shares and then this host mounting it back again. So we can see that that comes from 102.1.7 overt engine. And we can see we have a file system here called overt engine. So if we cd to forward slash overt engine, in here we have 09 blah, blah blah images and now we have a bunch of these UIDs. Now the UID that we care about ends in 7C so we can see that that is this one here. So if we CD to that in here we have the actual disks so this one here So we can see that that is a QCOW image. So that is the actual disk that we're going to want to use for this node. Um, what's this one? Okay, so this is the, so when we load into Fedora, we're going to just point libvert at this directory. And we're going to pick up that disk and we're going to boot it. That's the plan. So hopefully that will work. Let's go back to Overt and see what else we need to get. Okay, so what else do I care about here? I care about the IDM server. So this does a lot more than just IDM. You can see here it has um, two terabytes almost of disk space. This stores a lot of my backups as well. So a lot of things are synced into this backup directory and then that is on a 
on a RAID volume on the server so that I can hopefully not lose things. So I definitely want to preserve this as well. So friendly names and in disk 1, 2 and 3. So we just go to our disks again. We don't really need to go through that whole process. The only thing that's important to us is these UIDs. So I can basically just copy this. So what I've done is I've gone through and I have copy and pasted all of the disks that I care about just into this document here. So we can see disk 1, 2, 3. This captured all the UIDs. <coughs> Then all of my Kubernetes nodes, so the HAProxy, the Kubernetes node 1, 2, the, the master nodes, and then the, the controller nodes as well. So I've got all the UIDs now. So the other thing we want to do is we have networks set up on here. So I'm contemplating just creating the exact same networks on Fedora server, which would mean we copy the network scripts for them. So you can see here we've got a bond set up and then various VLANs on top of the bonds and the external infra, internal API, etc, etc, they're all bridges. So I'm contemplating just doing that on Fedora server, that's going to be the, the quick and easy way out of it. So I can just copy all these files over and then copy them into the network scripts directory and start them all up on Fedora server. The other option that I kind of would prefer is if we use open vSwitch on Fedora and we create some open vSwitch bridges and then open vSwitch bond and then we put the VMs on the various bridges that we create in open vSwitch that would be probably my preferred option but we will see how we feel about it I think what we need to do though is, is at least make a backup of these so that I have this as an option so we'll copy IFCFG everything to over engine. Actually, you know what? And then we will copy all of it to scripts. So now we should have that as an option for when we install Fedora server. The other thing we need to do is figure out all these mounts. So ideally, as I said, we want to keep these file systems. So this over engine one, this VMs one needs to stay. This over HE, I'm not sure I care about that. Let's just have a look at what that is. I'm not sure I care about this. Let's have a look back here at our storage domains. So hosted storage. Yeah, so that's just for our hosted engine. So we don't need our hosted engine anymore. So I can blow that away. That's fine. This images directory. So it's just coming from images. You can see what's in there as well. So nothing of importance in there, they're old images anyway, so we can blow that away as well. So the only ones that are important is this overt engine one and the VMs directory. So we might rename them as part of the Fedora install as well. For now though, we have downloaded the latest version of Fedora server. So we go to download and grab for Fedora. See we have Fedora server here for 35 and have a look at the message. We plugged in a USB drive, so let's just unplug and replug it. That's definitely it. STC. Uh, did it mount it? It did mount it. Let's just see what's on there. That is a version of Windows 11, so we definitely do not need that. So what we're going to do is get our name for our Fedora image again, which is this one. There you go, sudo dd. Actually, let's just wipe that drive first. Dev0 sdc, dns equals from there, counts, 
thousand. So we will just destroy the contents of the drive first. We'll write zeros to it, and then we will write our image to that USB drive, and then we can look at provisioning the server. Okay, that's finished now. So now we will write our image to that file. Fedora server equals dev stc equals status equals progress. So now we are writing our Fedora server image to our thumb drive, and then we will use that to boot our server and install Fedora server. The only other thing I did on that node is I have this OpenShift directory and it has a bunch of file systems on there and they are exported. So we can, let's see, exports. We can see they're exported here. So let's just make a backup of Etsy exports as well so that it's easy when I install Fedora. Just put it straight in that directory. Then we can just copy Etsy exports over and remove the um, overt related ones and I can still have all of my, my Kubernetes and OpenShift storage available. Okay, so that is done now. So now we can make sure it's finished writing everything to that drive. Then we can eject it and we will look at how we can bring up an iDraft console so that we can see what we're going to be doing on the server. Okay, so now we need to connect to our iDRAC because we because it's an old iDRAC 6, so the R7 tends have the old iDRACs, they don't have the web console. So there's a cool project called iDRAC 6. And what we can do is, uh, let's not use it, let's just do it as me, podman run. Okay, so we will podman run We'll run it detached. It's going to expose the ports 5800 and 5900. We're going to connect to the iDRAC host at 192.168.2.7, which is the R710. We're going to use the iDRAC user root, iDRAC password, which I've created an environment variable for. We'll call it iDRAC R710 iDRAC1. We're going to use the DOM style iDRAC6 container. So we've now started that. So what we can do now is just double check that's running. It is, so now we can VMC to that. Okay, so now we can use Remnant to do 127.0.0.1 and we'll connect to 5900. Okay, so here we go. Now we have the console available to us. Okay, so we'll plug in our thumb drive and we will install Fedora Server. Actually, before we do that, let's just shut down all of our VMs. That's probably a better idea. So you might be wondering why Fedora Server. It's just because I don't want to mess around with the um, RAID controller, basically. So with CentOS 8 or RHEL, Eight. They don't have the the RAID controller software for the RAID controller in the old R7 and R610 series of servers, whereas Fedora does. So it's really just because I'm lazy. It's probably a decision that will come back to bite me because Fedora will update something that will be incompatible with my environment, like removing the network scripts file, um, removing the network scripts RPM, and all my network scripts will break. But, you know, it's fun when things break. It, it gives us an opportunity to learn something we might not have had the opportunity to learn otherwise. So everything is shut down now. So let's power off this server. We can do it from here. Now, I think I've had issues with the keyboard through this system before. So I might just plug in a physical keyboard. Okay, so let's, so I'll just fast forward through the whole installation this time, really wants to see it. So I'll do it, you won't hear from me and then we'll come back once the server is rebooted.
I guess this is actually something important to talk about. So here we'll choose custom, go done, and we want to preserve some of our petitions here. So So let's keep that one and we will mount it at var lib lib uh, This one here, var log. This one here we'll mount it var log, 20 gig, var log. Um, now from our old installation, we have a home directory. Uh, if we can reuse that, so we'll mount that at home. Now these are the ones we wanted to keep here. So over engine, if you remember, had um, some of the the storage on it. So we will preserve that. I might just call that small. And then uh, our VMs one, we want to preserve that as well. We'll call that VMs as well. It can just stay as the same name. Uh, you know what? We might use this one here just as slash var, it's 50 gig, so that'll give us slash var and slash var log that'll be mounted separately. So we'll update settings. We, we want to reformat them as well, actually. So let's update that var log audit var log. We want to reformat because we don't want the the old stuff there. So this home one will reformat that as well. Okay, settings. I might just leave var lib lib word. We'll see what's in there because I didn't check before destroying everything. So let's just see what's in there. Um, now, these ones here we definitely want to reformat, so we'll have that as root still and we'll reformat it. And boot, we we'll use that as boot again, reformat, update settings. Swap. We can use that as swap again, that's fine. Boot EFI, yep, yeah, we can do the same thing again. Boot EFI, reformat, update. We can do this again as well. E, reformat. Just delete that. No, no, no. So we're just going to delete the bar one. And then we'll delete the var log one because we've already got them.
Okay, so I think... Definitely delete this swap petition now. And we can see here, this is that HE one that we looked at before, this one here. So we can go ahead and delete that as well. So this will free up a fair bit of extra space for us now, so we can allocate that accordingly once we're, once we're actually in there. I guess we've got 600 gigs, so maybe we should expand some stuff while we're here. So let's make home 100 gig. We might just leave the other available space and then we can expand the volume groups as we see fit once, we're, once we've actually provisioned the operating system. So let's just double check that we're not blowing away any of our important data. So we'll click on VMs, yep, no reformat. Click on small, no reformat. Everything else should be reformatted. Yep, okay, so that's what we want. Let's click done. We will accept those changes. Okay, now the rest of this I'll probably just fast forward through because it's not going to be very interesting. Alright, so we have Fedora installed now. Now I've gone through and done some setup things that I thought might be a little bit boring, but I'm going to explain what I've done so that we're all up to speed. So I've installed Cockpit. I've got a couple of things in Cockpit, including the Virtual Machines um, plugin here. And I've gone ahead and imported one VM to make sure I know what I'm talking about before I explain it to you guys. So for the networking, what we've done, I was going to just do those overt networks, but I decided in the end to use Open vSwitch. So if we look at what I've configured in OBS, we can see here I've created two bridges, one BR control plane, the other one BR cloud. So this is where we're going to plug in all of our VMs, and we can see we've plugged in our first VM there. So what I did was I created an OVS trunk, uh, OVS bond, and then I've trunked my VLANs on that bond. So we can see that is OVS bond zero there. Switch to history, grab OVS bond zero. Uh, so this command here, number 76. So we do OVS VSCTL add bond, BR cloud, that's the bridge we're adding it, adding it to, OVS bond zero. These are the two interfaces we're adding, ENO2 and ENO3. And we're going to use LACP on that because the switch is a Cisco switch and it's also configured to LACP. Then we set the trunks, so we're trunking all these VLANs through that bond. Then once I had created the VM, we just tagged the port. So we tagged it here with um, VLAN 4. So let's have a look at importing a VM from the start and we'll look at how to then add it to OBS and how to configure the tagging and then make sure it works. So the next one we're going to add here is this K8, we'll add K8 to node 1. So we need to identify where that disk is on our file system. If you remember we, we kept the file systems and remounted them to Fedora. So we'll have a look in small first. Which is a little grep for that. So we can see that that disk is in the small file system. So we'll go to virtual machines, we'll go import VM. This one will be K8 node 1. We need 
things like that. We're gonna go as small. Yeah. We can say that it's already doing it for us. And then it's in images. Images. And then the disk image. And then the disk itself. So we scroll across here. And we can see that this is the disk we want to import. Now that is a CentOS 8 image. And memory. This is node 2. So we'll give this one 12 gig of RAM. And we don't want to start it immediately, so we'll uncheck that box and we'll import the VM. So that's going to import. Looks like it's done there now. We'll go back to our terminal to bash list all. So we can see we've got it here now. Okay, so now we want to edit the interfaces because it's going to have an interface that refers to what we had in Overt and we don't want that anymore. So we want to edit this and we want to um, create an open vSwitch network. So we're going to go bash edit. We're going to look for interface. So here it is here. So now the interface type is not going to be network. It's going to be um, bridge. The source network. So this will now be source bridge instead of network. And this is BR Cloud, as we saw before. BR Cloud. Now we don't want model type. We want virtual port type port type and this will now be open v switch open v switch um then the pci address i can say the same that doesn't really matter virtual port type bridge. mac address can say the same that's fine okay so let's save that uh, looks like i have done something wrong Try that again. Nice. Mac is bridge. Source bridge. The cloud. And virtual port type. Virtual port type is open B switch. Okay, now we've configured it properly, so let's go and start that VM and see if that's going to work now. Looks like we're booting up. We can get the right drop. It's probably not going to like being started like this because I don't have the control plane nodes imported yet. So what we'll do is we might just check that this works. So we'll log in. Now remember we haven't tagged the port yet. So let's see what this looks like before we do that. So type in a. We can see that we have an IP address. But what have we pinged the gateway? So it's not working, that ping isn't working. So what we need to do is have a look at OBS. Now we can see we have VNet2. So if we remember what we did before, we're, we're gonna do this OBS via CTL set port and we're gonna set the tag for that port. I'll set port vnet2 tag equal to 4. Now let's go back to our VM and we can see the ping has started working. So that's great, that's what we want. So uh, we'll just pull everything. Exit our console. So let's import our control plane nodes now. So here we go, he's master 2. 
Okay, control plane node one. So this is the one we want to import first. So we'll go back here. Now we need to find this disk again. So I think these are all in small, if I remember correctly, but we'll just go check. Yeah. Nice, this one isn't proves me wrong straight away. There it is. Okay, so this one's in VMs. Alright, so we go to net, uh, virtual machines, go back here, import VM, and you know what, let's take the opportunity to do some friendly language. Okay, so we can see the, the Kubernetes API is again responding. So that is all of our Kubernetes nodes that have been imported. So look, I think I'll stop this video there. And the next one, I will look at deploying um, OpenShift. And then we will use the director operator to redeploy the OpenStack environment. So in the meantime, I'll just import the controller and those two compute nodes that I was using. And then in the next video, we'll look at running the deployment for OpenShift.